Hey, JP. Good afternoon. Hey, Chris. Two quick questions. First, how much special teams do you guys do in first years, and what was the return on that? And secondly, uh, both Mike Norvell and Adam Fuller praised Patrick Kane as arguably the most improved player on this team. Uh, just position coach, what do you have to add to that conversation? Uh, starting with the special teams, you know, the spring for us is, is really a big focus on fundamentals and technique, you know, similar to the first couple of weeks of how fall camp works. Um, so we, we did, we worked two different phases. Uh, we worked our combat zone, which this is what we call it. We call it combat zone compete, which is essentially kickoff cover versus kickoff return, but in short area. So, it, you know, it's, it's not the full cover of the field, but it's, it's the end of the play scenario. So for the, for the coverage unit, obviously the, the, the goal is to get off a block um, when you don't have time to run around the block. It's the two-gap mentality, get off the block and, and make the play. And then for the return unit, um, instead of, of the guys having to drop and, and get to their landmarks uh, like you would on a kickoff return, again, the space is closed. So it's really about finishing the blocks um, and, and using the fundamentals and techniques that we teach in terms of how you do that. So we were able to get that compete in. And then uh, the other thing that we do install because it has the most um, schematic to it is uh, our punt unit. So we have installed punt. Um, today was, was kind of the first time in a scrimmage setting that we were able to work that. Um, and, and we were able to work you know, two groups in that. And I thought we got some really good work there. In terms of your question uh, about Pat, um, I do see, see uh, significant improvement in um, how he's playing the game, but more specifically, uh, his physicality and, and how he's playing the run. Uh, I think we saw some flashes of what he could be as a pass rusher a year ago. Uh, I know one of his goals is to be an every down guy and be a complete player, and, and uh, that started to show up uh, you know, really with, with how he's approached his offseason, getting stronger in the weight room. Uh, I think that gives you confidence to be more physical on the field, and and uh, that, that's showing up right now for him. But, you know, that is where we should be in terms of his development. You know, he's a guy that, that has a high ceiling and uh, he's going into his redshirt sophomore year. So, you know, our, my expectations is that we keep growing and, and, you know, that we're just scratching the surface of what he potentially could be. Hey, JP, I, I'm sure you guys would love to have Mike uh, available, um, but with him not available, what kind of work have you guys done as the other punt return candidates? And has anybody kind of stood out so far? Yeah, you know, so I, I always try to look at these scenarios when guys get uh, injured. Um, you know, how, how can you turn it, what is a negative for, for the player and for the team into a positive? And one of those things is, is other guys get reps. Um, and, and so far we have gotten, you know, a, a lot of quality reps for Ja'Kai Douglas, um, for Winston Wright, for um, Dre Jacobs, for Azaria Thomas. So, um, you know, those guys are working back there and working, you know, they're getting a lot of opportunities, a lot of reps, and, uh, you know, they're getting more comfortable with it. Um, you know, obviously you, you love to have a guy like Micah and, and get him back as soon as we possibly can because he's so consistent and reliable. But I think we are getting some really quality reps with those other guys now. So, um, you know, we're creating depth as we go. Hey, JP, I was just curious of your assessment of, of Bailey Pickard, the Bay Pickard so far. And I guess given that there's it's probably there's always a level of competition that how do you go about grading uh, like who's performing ideally as little as empty start and there's a lot of room to go there with whoever makes the right pick or is there a little bit more to it than that? Um, well, you know, there, there's so so far the competition has been really good, and the thing that, that I do like about the competition is that you can feel those two guys pushing each other, um, but also uh, what I've been proud to see from both of them is um, also supporting each other. You know, because you want the competitiveness within a team structure. And, you know, I see, uh, you know, when Tyler makes a kick, Ryan is the first one over there to say something positive to him. And then vice versa, when Ryan makes a kick, Tyler does the same thing. But um, so, so there's a couple different ways in which we grade it. Um, one of them is that we chart in the spring because we only practice every other day. They all go through a kick chart. Um, each one of those kick charts is, um, is always uh, we keep track of, tallied both on a daily basis and then on a cumulative base basis and then um, then they have their team reps with the full team that's in a separate category so all those are, are graded and, and uh, statistically we keep the records on, on how they went and then at the end of practice they have the game-winning field goal opportunities where they got to be out in front of the whole team and have an opportunity to kick a game-winning kick 
Um, and then you have the team scenarios uh, and scrimmages that that will be evaluated. So that that's a big piece of it, just the raw numbers of of evaluating the kicks and, and the number of makes and how they do it. But then there's also the 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 eye test that um, as a coach um, you evaluate to see who's hitting the ball well um, because not all misses are the same, uh, not all makes are the same, and uh, you know so so it, there is that subjective piece to the evaluation. But you know I try to stick to the numbers as as, mo as much as I can because we do want this to be a uh, an earned competition and not make a predetermined decision. Hey, Drisky, uh, Coach Holder talked about, I mean, how, how high on Joe Boylan's upside he is athletically and brings all that, I guess. I'm just thinking your impression of how he's hit the ground running through, I guess, five practices in terms of the football side of things more than just the athleticism in, in, in today's game. Well, you know, even though he is a, an experienced player, each system is different. How we teach is a little bit different. So there's a lot of new things flying at him all at once. Um, and I think he's doing a pretty good job of adapting. The one thing I, I've noticed about him and, and appreciate about him is um, he is a he's a quick corrector of things that I want to see fixed. Uh, so if in one practice um, there's a fundamental or technique that need to be corrected, he's able to then take the correction from the meeting room and apply it to the practice field. Same thing uh, when we correct something schematically. So the fact that he, he has a, a um, that ability to, to listen and then apply um, is going to bode well for him in his transition because um, you know you want guys that that are able to to take the information and then go apply it and play fast and um, you know he's shown the ability to do that you know he's just starting um, to to really understand what what we're trying to get done uh, here defensively and, and I think he's going to be a big part of what we do going forward. Yeah, you know, he, he is driven. He is focused. Um, you know, he, he when he and I talked, uh, you know, early in the offseason or coming off the, the end of the year uh, from last year, you know, his big focus was to get stronger in the weight room um, because he felt like it would allow him to be more physical and, and uh a better run player at the point of attack. And, you know, he's he's focused on that. You see the gains that he's made in the weight room. He's made dramatic strides in terms of what his numbers are in the weight room, and that's starting to translate for him on the field. Um, but I also think that um, if you asked him, uh, he would tell you that he's not even close to being where what his ceiling could potentially be, and, and that's how I feel about it too. I, I think we're just starting to see what he could potentially be. And uh, – you know, but we got to stay focused and and stay on track. And and I and I think the, his best days are ahead of him. Uh, when you guys bring in transfers, um, I don't know if every school treats special teams with the importance that you guys do with coach. Um, so, like when transfers come in, who might be able to help on special teams. Um, are they embracing that right away? Have you seen the buy-in from, from those guys yet? Well, you know, I think uh, like all all parts of your program, um, the the areas of important that, especially that are stressed by the head coach, they're going to become important for everybody on the team. Um, so coach makes such an emphasis on the importance of how we play special teams and more importantly, the fundamentals and techniques that go along with the special teams play that – Right from the very beginning, as a as a transfer, you're able to identify the fact that hey, this is pretty important because when it becomes special teams time, everybody's attention is focused towards that. Whether that's assistant coaches, whether that's Coach Norvell, all the veteran players. So it doesn't take long to be here to realize that that's part of the culture of being in this program is is the importance of special teams play. So uh, the buy-in and the understanding of the importance happens pretty quick for those newcomers. Thank you, guys. Enjoy your Saturday. Recording stopped.